Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm Tara Osman, one of the three co-founders of Yanzu, the startup that will help you focus on what really matters. Imagine that you're in office working on your biggest deal of the year. It requires your full attention, but at the back of your head, you know that your friend just had a baby and you need to send them flowers. And coming to office this morning, you had your check engine lamp on. And this is the time of the year where you need to get your dog vaccinated. Yanzu is here to help you focus on what really matters while taking care of everything else for you, all through a simple WhatsApp message. This is a sample order. I had a problem with my laptop charger. I texted Yanzu. Yanzu already knows my laptop model from previous order and they know my office location. Yanzu will find suppliers who can fulfill the order and they'll sort out the right courier arrangement. They'll come back to me with a quotation. Once I confirm payment will be done online, fulfillment will happen within two to four hours. Yanzu is a texting aggregator. We connect clients to suppliers through the most convenient communication channel, texting. We're available through all texting platforms and we do orders across all verticals, retail, services, booking, and food. Yanzu is a one-stop shop that is personalized. On demand, we know how to get things done. On the front end, the client sees a WhatsApp message, but on the back end, it's a completely different operational model. Yanzu is the perfect middleman. Client will initiate a conversation through WhatsApp. It will come to our ticketing system where we will ask few preset questions to understand more the nature of the request. Then we'll start shortlisting suppliers who we, believe, who we believe can fulfill the order. We'll contact these suppliers, ask for quotation and rank the quotation. Then we'll go back to the client with the three best options we got. Only when the client confirm, we'll charge their credit card. Then we'll go back to the supplier to confirm on placing the order and track them while doing fulfillment. Final step is to get the customer feedback. 20% of this process is now automated. For the sake of the product development plan, we have divided this process into five sections. Phase one of automation is supplier selection, followed by solution creation, followed by request formulation, order confirmation, and fulfillment. Traction. For the first two months of joining Wanda X, Yanzo have been growing at 40% month on month, organically. Our growth in March is 112%. We did more than $17,000 of GMV and acquired more than 350 new customers. At this point, I really need to highlight that Yanzo operations team that is managing this growth is only one full-timer and two undergrads. Growth is completely fueled by word of mouth and partnerships. Yanzo business model is very simple. We take a margin per transaction, both from the client and the supplier. Our objective is to increase the supplier discount to 12% and reduce the client margin to 5%, which will leave us with 17% of margin per transaction. Our path to profitability is very clear. With our current unit economics, Yanzo breaks even at 78 orders per agent per month, which we almost reached this figure in March. And with our current tech infrastructure, the maximum capacity per agent is 220 orders, which means that Yanzu is already profitable business model with our current setup. The, the curve will only start to flatten once we reach the maximum supplier discount. Having said that, we know that partnerships is the major driver for our business, and we're doing a great job in that. Direct partnerships with major international brands and indirect partnerships through affiliate networks to give us higher exposure given the current limited resources that we have. We're ending 2020 with 5% supplier discount and our objective is to reach 12% by 2023. Yanzu is a very sticky service. Given the short lifetime of the business, 15% of our customers did more than five orders with Yanzu. We cannot be pitching today without highlighting the elephant in the room, COVID-19. This is the perfect growth hack we would have ever looked for. 12 months of free growth. And this is not an assumption. We're already seeing the figures in March and April. More than 100% growth month on month organically. And on the supplier's side, suppliers need us more than ever. Given the drop on footfall in their physical stores, Yanzo now is becoming the primary sales channel for many of them. The market size for what we're doing is 67 billion US dollar. And this is in the UAE only. We're looking for 650K to invest in partnerships technology, mainly building the team. In building our financial model, we have taken our current KPI, plugged them in the model and forecasted how the business will perform in the future. And we're very confident that Yanzu will be profit generating in July 2021, which is only 13 months post considering the investment. 
the idea is not unique. We have many international competitors and some of them are doing great. They're getting acquired by Amazon. Haptic just got acquired by a telecom company for $100 million. However, we have no direct competition in the region and our business model is unique. We're 100% asset free. We manage the whole process from customer conversation to fulfillment tracking without having a single asset. Behind Yanzu, there is a team of four coming from different backgrounds, from consulting, investment, and operations. If you have not tried Yanzu before, please go to our website and place your first order. Thank you. Everybody, I'm Aaron Summerhill, a co-founder of Holo, and Holo is busy as streamlining the house buying and lending process through digitization. Now, I want you to imagine for a second, you're about to commit to the biggest financial decision of your life. You're about to buy a property and take out a mortgage on that. Envisage how you'd want that process to look. You'd want it to be online, you want it to be quick, you want it to be transparent. Now, unfortunately, here in the Middle East, we found that there's a lack of clear and available information for people who are looking to buy a property. The pain points that we tend to see from our clients are that they don't know that they're getting the best possible deal. The process for buying a property is very confusing. How do they start this? And how much is it actually going to cost them? Do they have enough cash to buy their dream home? Luckily, that's where Holo comes in. Now, through our website, we'll assess eligibility by answering a few simple questions. We'll pinpoint the best product that the consumer is looking for and our algorithm will select the most suitable option from all of the mortgage products within the market. It then presents this to them within minutes into their inbox. From there, they can upload all the required documentation and then they can track the process from start to finish in the Holo portal, where they'll also have access to additional services like discounts on life and property insurance, reach out to uh, vetted real estate professionals, and here they can also track the health of their current loan. So this system will cross-reference other deals that are in the market and notify them as if there is a cheaper option for them to switch out to. This improves the stickiness of our client experience. It's not just a one-off uh, transaction, they become a lifetime client of Holo. Now, myself and Michael have been in the market for 15 years. We'd looked at the problems that ourselves and our clients had faced. We looked at what was being done in more established regions. And we tried to bring a bit of that into the, uh, the GCC with Holo. Our market competitors at the moment are made up of banks, offline brokers, and comparison websites. Um, however, if you have a client who is looking for a whole of market advice with instant information, digital advice with online tracking of their application and the full process being managed for them from start to finish, completely free of charge, only Holo is their uh, current option. Now, the market size we were going after was uh, formerly the new loan market, which in uh, 2018 was valued at 120 billion in Dubai alone. Our target was and still is to be hitting 100 million dirhams worth of business written on a monthly basis. However, with everything that's gone on with COVID, we've had to kind of uh, pivot our uh, acquisition. The good news is we were assisted by the changes within the market. In the last month, interest rates have dropped by 25%, whereas loan to values have increased from 75 to 80%. What that's done is allowed us to reach out to the existing loan market, which is considerably bigger at 320 billion, to look to refinance and help people save money by switching their loans to an alternative deal. We monetize Holo through payments from the bank. Our average case size over the last six months has been just under 2 million. We get a payout of uh, typically 0.75% of the loan that's being taken. Our average ticket size therefore over the last six months has been just under 15,000 dirham. And currently, our cost acquisition is running at under 700 dirhams per person. So you can see that we're dealing with uh, big margins. Progress to date, we launched the website in its current format as part of the uh, Wanda cohort on the 15th of February. Since then, we've had 105 applications, 36 of which are still ongoing. We've submitted or approved 11 cases to date, which has brought net revenue to Holo of 187,000 dirhams. 
Our leads come from various sources, from discussions with property portals to manage their home loan inquiries, social media, our existing networks. We're currently reaching out to 5,500 registered real estate agents to channel their business through our website. And we're also going to start rebrokering at our Holo contacts after a two year period. Expansion wise, we're live with uh, phase one. We're going to look to hit 50 cases per month on uh, the digital mortgage brokerage before then looking to launch phase two, which is Holo Channel. This is a point of sale SaaS system to allow third party entities to submit mortgage business through Holo. And we will be targeting banks, real estate brokers and insurance brokers for this. That's gonna be charged on a per user subscription. Before finally in year three, we'll look to launch our loan originator software. This allows banks and lenders to actually tr uh, transact smoother internally while also integrating through to the point of sale system to give them a front to back application service managed by Holo. Our forecast for the next three years, first 18 months, we're going to focus on the digital advisor before then launching our subscription services. And in the third year, then look to start rebrokering our deals that we were done in uh, year one. Our target within the uh, three years is to be hitting a turnover on $400,000 on a monthly basis. Our funding requirements are primarily made up of staffing, um, marketing and tech. We're looking for $750,000 to allow us to do this. And since launch, we've won awards. We've wowed the crowds at step. And for the last three months, we've been working with Wanda to really uh, fine tune our market proposition to take out and launch um, immediately. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to your questions. Hey everyone, my name is Hamza and I'm the founder and CEO of Maya Network. I have over 10 years experience in investments and entrepreneurship and just like many of the startups today, I'm here trying to solve a problem I face both as an investor and as an entrepreneur. I'd also like to briefly discuss the effects of the coronavirus on the investment ecosystem, which I'll highlight later during the presentation. So what's the problem? Investors today have limited or no liquidity in the investments they make, which ultimately results in 70% of their investments being written off. And the 30% that do succeed, investors have to wait five to eight years to exit via IPO or private placement. On the other hand, companies have limited access to investors, and the fundraising structure today is time consuming and inefficient. Companies have to go through excessive networking, pitching, negotiations, and deal structure, and when they do decide to exit, the process takes one to two years. Imagine a world where investors always have access to the top deal flow. They are never tied down to the investments that they make and can exit whenever they want, and always have the freedom to invest in better opportunities. On the other hand, growth companies can always access the best investors. They focus more on their business rather than focusing four to six months of their precious time on fundraising. We believe this is possible through the Maya platform. Maya is a global private exchange for VC vetted growth companies. We enable growth companies to raise capital from a global community of institutional angel investors and provide quality deal flow to investors which they can always choose to exit at any time. Our platform is ultimately the best solution for startups and investors like yourselves to raise capital and invest in a systematic and controlled environment. Our primary market is a transparent and efficient way for growth companies to raise capital from institutional angel investors. Our secondary market exchange gives shareholders direct control of their shares and enables them to buy and sell shares of their existing companies without any intermediate parties ensuring that their investments always remain liquid. Maya simplifies the whole investment journey from funding to liquidation. Investors scout for high quality companies through our online directory. They subscribe to their business of interest, negotiate the terms and close the deal. They manage their portfolio and map out their desired returns. They list their shares on a secondary market, negotiate their selling price and exit, and then collect their returns and plan for the next investment. For growth companies, raising capital could not be easier. Companies onboard on the Maya platform, set up their profile and upload all relevant fundraising information. They find the lead investor who will lead the terms. They agree on the terms and generate them directly on the platform. They gain access and communicate directly with follow-on investors, approve terms and agreements with mutually interested investors, and allocate the shares to the chosen investors and receive the funds. Our portfolio management tools help institutional and angel investors manage their portfolio provides the necessary tools to monitor companies' performance and allows them to generate smart and analytical reports. 
Our investor relationship tools offer business and investors the tool to manage the relationship by sharing progress and latest updates. Both parties can structure, amend, and generate terms and agreements and approve and digitally sign this documentation directly on the platform. Our technology fundamentally changes how the capital market value chain is managed, namely issuance, distribution, allocation, and trading. Our blockchain-enabled exchange ensures that transactions are always traceable, transparent, and KYC and AML compliant. Blockchain also allows peer-to-peer -peer transactions, cutting costs, and eliminating third parties. Our smart securities are fully programmable smart contracts that self-enforce and contain embedded in terms and agreements, ensuring only authorized parties can transfer, buy, and sell. Maya aligns itself with both startups and investors. We only take 5% from companies who successfully fundraise, and take 10% of capital gains on successful exits in the secondary market. Although many companies offer one or two solutions, Maya provides all the necessary capital market solutions throughout the investment journey, offering smart security-backed primary and secondary market exchange. We are one out of four companies globally that offer a unified solution and differentiate ourselves by offering a proprietary onboarding process, a smarter systematic approach to investments, and attractive user pricing. Startups globally received approximately $295 billion in funding in 2019, of which approximately $56 billion were invested in MENA, Southeast Asia, and Europe. Maya aims to capture 5% of the market over the next five years in four phases. During the past four months, Maya has managed to attract a strong team to execute the project, built a sample demo, and successfully validated our product with startups and investors. We are currently working on the regulatory process and aim to deliver our first offering by Q4 2020 and a full product suite launch by Q3 2021. The investment landscape is rapidly transforming because of the coronavirus, and we believe we are perfectly positioned to help investors and startups make that transition. We have all noticed the behavioral shift towards remote investing, as we are experiencing right now, with 63% of employees are now working from home. Funds and accelerators have switched to online models for scouting and investing, with some deals being fully closed online. Investors need liquidity more than ever. With industry risk profiles shifting dramatically, investors urgently need more liquidity in order to avoid risks and capture new opportunities. Startups need faster and cost-efficient ways to raise capital. With the current circumstance, companies are struggling to fundraise and will need access to more investors. As we saw in 2008, tough economic circumstances are the breeding grounds for the world's best unicorns, such as WhatsApp, Instagram, and Uber. Mai is the best solution for times like this. Our team has over 20 years combined experience in investing in entrepreneurship and over 10 years experience in developing state-of-the-art financial software. We are currently asking for $1 million for key hires, product development, regulatory licenses, and legal support. With Maya, investing is no longer a game of home runs. If you'd like to find out more information or if you have any more questions, please contact me by phone or email. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for joining us today. I hope our excitement is coming across virtually. I'm Farak from Subspace, and we're providing businesses a smarter way to manage their subscribers. Myself, and along with a stellar team of techies and business partners, we're building the region's first subscription management platform to help subscription businesses like these manage their subscribers. Now, let me explain. Regardless of the product or service a company is offering, they still need to undertake some non-core operations just to manage their subscribers. They need to provide them with multiple pricing plans, sometimes changing them as well, integrate with multiple payment gateways to allow their customers to pay in different ways, allow their subscribers to edit their plans or modify their plans by upgrading or downgrading or pausing for some time if needed. And at the end of a billing cycle, they need to make sure their invoices are generated and their subscribers are being charged. Now, of course, doing this manually is very hectic, so companies tend to build some internal system to hack around that. Interviews we've conducted with small businesses and startups have shown us that it can take them up to 16 weeks and $30,000 just to come up with um, a system that meets their current needs. But as they grow and as they add more features, it turns into this big ball of mud, as we call it in software. It, it, it comes a product of its own and, and have its own maintenance and, and team to manage it. Now, another alternative is to use a subscription management platform, just like Subspace. It's much more cost effective since they can just use it out of the box to manage their subscribers. It's much more secure since it complies with all the security uh, um, standards worldwide. It automates the whole process for them. And it's much more flexible since it offers them multiple ways to offer their plans and manage their subscribers and help them as they grow. Signing up with Subspace is pretty easy. 
You just need a merchant account with a payment gateway that we support, set up your pricing plans on the platform, and add some scripts here and there on your website or backend, depending on how complex your product is. It will help you with a lot of insights and analytics on our platform to show you how your business is doing. We give you the checkout experiences that are brandable by your company, color scheme and logos, of course. We keep track of your customers, which plan they're on and, and which plan they've moved to. We generate the invoices for you at the end of the billing cycle. And we help you create pricing plans in minutes with the multiple pricing models that we support. We also play nicely with the tools that you might be already using and we integrate with them pushing data or, or getting data from them to play nicely with everything that you already have. Subscription software is already a $5 billion market and it's expected to more than double in the next five years. If you look at the MENA, of course, numbers are more challenging to get by. So inferring the market size by multiplying the uh, number of digital consumers who would be subscribed to at least one service by a subscription service that it's on average $30 per month, we reach a $25 billion of subscriptions volumes annually, creating a market size for subscription management software around $400 million. We're targeting to, uh, to uh, manage $5 billion of that to net us around $60 million in uh, annual recurring gravity. And if you think five billion is too much, just look at this um, handful of companies, they amount for nearly half a billion dollars annually. Our pricing model is pretty simple. We just charge a percentage on the revenue that we're managing for the companies, in addition to some uh, premium features that they might need to pay for um, separate. Globally, there are multiple of companies who offer subscription management. However, none of them are supporting the payment gateways or the companies in the MENA region. So we're the first to offer such a service in the region to help the companies convert to subscription models and grow with us. So far, we've had interest from more than 30 companies. We've uh, signed up four companies to start our pilot with us. We've also partnered with two payment partners in the Egypt and the UAE um, to give us special rates for our clients. We'll also be integrating with other payment gateways. We have around two months of development ahead of us before starting our pilot, after which we'll be launching in the Marina region and try to grow as fast as we can since we're the first to market. During the COVID-19, we're offering companies three months for free and we'll be hosting webinars and writing articles about how to digitize your businesses and run a successful uh, subscription business. We believe there's a huge opportunity in the market right now. The market is growing the MENA region entirely is growing. We're the first to offer such a service. And since we're the first with a sticky product, we can gain a huge market share up front. And with research showing that more than 30% of uh, companies are willing to adopt subscription, a subscription element in one way or the other, we believe that uh, the need for a, a management platform in the region has never been uh, much higher. And even with what's happening around us, the acceleration of this transformation is doing uh, is making a huge demand on digital enablement tools like subspace and it's also is stressing the convenience of subscription uh, models as a much more convenient way for customers to consume products and services we're asking for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to give us 18 months of runway and we plan to manage one million dollars um, in that um, uh, duration that's just the core product. We also have ideas for more uh, products, including intelligent subscribers profiling, adding more marketing automation features on the platform, and facilitating the financing of subscription businesses uh, by giving them the liquidity that they need up front. Thank you very much. I'm here to answer any questions or reach out by email, parag at subspace.com. Please visit our website and uh, demo, and we're welcoming any feedback. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Kamal, founder of a company called Two Degrees. I've had my own traditional recruitment company since 2012, and in the last eight years, I've learned as much as I can about recruitment. What I noticed is that companies, especially those that didn't have their own in-house recruitment teams, struggled with the whole process when it came to growing their team, not just the recruitment part. From the early point of writing a job description, which was often frustrating, to then posting that into a job post and getting hundreds of irrelevant applicants, which then lowered the company's productivity as they went through them. If they decided to do it the old fashioned way in a headhunt, then access to the global Canada pool isn't always easy. If they wanted to go and use a recruiter externally, costs were often associated that were very high. And also the question is, which recruiter do I use? 
How do I know they're right for us? When you do finally hire a candidate, you send them an offer letter. What information should be in that offer letter? And all of this has a risk associated with it. Not only with the time and money with the recruitment process, but also what if you've got the wrong candidate? So I thought to myself, if I could attack all these problems and come up with a solution, that could be very, very valuable for many, many companies. So that's what I did. We partner with startups and SMEs to give them an end-to-end -end solution when they decide to grow their team. Our core product is giving them access to their own on-demand team of specialized recruiters, risk-free. Let me show you how it works. The company logs on onto their dashboard, and from here they can use one of the hundreds of preloaded job descriptions to post that into a marketplace. When it's in the marketplace, recruiters from around the world can bid to win your business. It's very important to note these recruiters do not work for us. They are all independent. Here you can see a sample of recruiters bidding. What's important to note is on the right-hand side, you can see they're bidding against each other. Some are bidding percentages of the annual salaries, others are bidding fixed fee. The employer gets to then dig down deeper into the recruiter's profile and pick up the five different recruiters to work with. In this particular example, I'm showing that he's picked three different recruiters. When he's picked those recruiters, an individual workspace opens up where you can talk directly to the recruiter and the recruiter can upload candidates into our applicant tracking system. When you hire a candidate, you could use one of our offer letter templates to send to the candidate. We then ask you to review the recruiter so we can build our community. And here comes the important part. On the first day of employment of your new, new employee, you are invoiced by two degrees. You never pay the recruiter directly. We invoice you. We then take that money and hold it in escrow for up to three months. That gives you the opportunity to work with, a, with your candidate and make sure they're right for you. We take our 20% from the recruiter. We never charge the employer anything. So why use us? Simplicity. We make hiring simple. Economical. You always guarantee the best market rate. And effective, because you can use five times, five times as many recruiters at once, it becomes more effective for you. And risk-free. So no hire, no fee policy, and we guarantee every candidate for up to three months. So what does the market look like? The recruitment market is $423 billion. We're going after the $48 billion in permanent recruitment work. There's the temporary recruitment work that's $375 billion that we'll go after in further iterations of the company. Our two main competitors are Hiring Hub and Boundary Jobs. The big difference between us and them, as mentioned earlier, is the recruitment marketplace. Recruiters bid against each other to get you the best price. In Hiring Hub and Boundary Jobs, the employer sets the rate that they're willing to pay. So it's not a true marketplace. Bounty Jobs has raised $30 million in funding and Hiring Hub is around $2.5 million. So where are we now? In the last year, we've had good traction. The number of freelancers has grown, as you can see by the top blue line. The green line is the number of employers, and the gray line is the number of jobs posted. The yellow line is the number of jobs filled. You can see that was ticking up nicely. What's frustrating is that in January and February, we had 40 live jobs. But because of COVID-19, all of these jobs went on hot. I want you to take note of these two numbers. LinkedIn had 20 million jobs posted in 2019. Bait had 82,000 jobs posted in Jan 2020. Why is that important? Our break even, I believe, should be 15,495 jobs posted. I expect we're only going to fill 15% of those, so 2,382 jobs. You can see how easily obtainable that number is. However, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I've taken our drivers to be very conservative, and hence don't see us making a profit till 2023. We could easily turn up those drivers and bring the profit into early 2022. So where are we now and what do we need to get to that point? I'm asking for $650,000. This is to grow my sales team. It's important to note here that I want to hire a salesperson in the UK and, and Silicon Valley so we can attack the startups in those areas. I also have got a budget for mar digital marketing. Up until this point, I've done no digital marketing. Because I bootstrapped this myself, I spent money on my one salesperson. As you can see here, as I just mentioned, I have only one salesperson with me, and the other two are my tech developers that look after the platform. So in summary, 
You have a unique opportunity to be part of a very big market, $420 billion. We're not limited by geography, and we have a very unique bidding marketplace that no other recruitment's do. Look, COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. Recruitment is not right now. But hopefully in the future, when COVID-19 leaves us, recruitment will start to come to the forefront of everyone's minds. And people will be especially looking for the low cost solution to their recruitment and the easy solution. And that's where we come in. We hope with our platform, we can make partnerships with SMEs as they start to grow again and startups as they start to grow again, making very lucrative for us and very lucrative for anyone that joins us on this journey. I thank you for your time and happy to take questions at any point. Hi guys, and welcome to Simply New Cars. I want you to close your eyes for a second and think back to your very first car. If you're anything like me, you'll fondly recall that memory with a sense of freedom. Freedom that you can finally go wherever you want. Freedom to choose your own road. At Simply New Cars, we believe in helping people discover that freedom. My name is Adam Whitnell. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Simply New Cars. I've had 20 years of experience in the old automotive industry across a range of verticals on three different continents. I've also got eight years of local market expertise. I'm joined by my co-founder and CTO, David Irvine, who has a background in high performance computing and has designed and built some of the world's largest distributed compute systems in areas such as earth science, biotech, and Formula One. He's also a previous founder himself. We're joined by two key advisors, firstly in the form of Nicholas Watson, whose experience in facilitating deal flow and digitization in tech growth markets makes him a key asset, along with Tarek El Titi, whose wealth of experience as a startup venture specialist has already proved invaluable. Now, did you know that there are 240,000 new cars sold in the UAE every year, around five times that amount in the wider GCC? Despite that, consumers are being faced with a frustrating inability to find complete information on the new cars available in the market. We surveyed a range of car buyers and discovered that 92% of them would prefer to be able to do all of their car research online rather than physically stepping foot in the dealerships. And this was before the current crisis. In addition to that, you've got small companies with their own fleet purchase needs and without the kind of procurement departments that larger companies have to be able to fulfill those needs. And then on the other side of the fence, you've got the dealerships themselves. They're struggling with a lack of quality leads that don't convert putting extra strain and pressure on already stressed sales and marketing departments. Simply New Cars is an innovative, data-driven platform that solves these problems. It helps people like Paul, who are looking for the perfect car for his family to be able to find exactly what he needs. It helps people like Ahmed, who knows what he wants already, but he just needs complete information on what's actually available in the local market. And it helps people like Sally, who's already made a choice and is ready to purchase or lease a car and simply wants to get on the road as quickly as possible at the cheapest price possible. We also help the dealerships. We help by providing the highest quality leads in the market for them to be able to convert. We're already seeing 21% of those leads converting as opposed to an industry average of around 5%. On top of that, 93% of people who have, made a, sorry, who have made an inquiry through the Simply New Cars platform have either bought a car of some description or are still in the market to buy one now. We serve three core groups of customers and are able to monetize all three of them combined through ad revenue and sponsorship. But we serve each group individually and take revenue from each group individually as well. From consumers, we offer the website completely free of charge, but we take a commission on the ancillary products and services around their car purchase. Later this year, we'll introduce our product for small companies where we provided combination automated personal buying service for them so that they don't need these big procurement um, sections of their business to be able to fulfill their mobility needs. And of course, on the uh, dealership side, we take revenue from the leads we send over and a commission on the cars that are sold off the back of those leads. Now, I think most of you probably know at least some of our comp competition. Most of these guys are focusing primarily on the used car market and the ones that are focusing on the new car market do so from an editorial perspective. Simply New Cars 
sits exclusively in the new car purchasing and leasing market with a focus on the transaction. Our expertise in this area, our network of dealers, and our ability to leverage our data are some of our key competitive advantages. We launched in May 2019, and by the end of last year, we'd already been delivering over 3 million dirhams and leads to the dealerships around the country, and we already had 10,000 unique users using the platform every month. In the first few months of this year, we've signed commercial agreements with an insurance aggregator and with an export company. We've also increased the value of the leads that we're sending to the dealerships as part of our pilot program by more than 36% per month. We now have relationships with 60 of the UAE's automotive brands. How many of those can you name? Right, the size of the market. In the GCC, we're looking at a market size of $30 billion. In the local UAE market, it's around $6 billion. And that's only new car sales alone. That doesn't include any of the new, sorry, any of the ancillary products and services that surround that purchase. COVID has hit us hard, as it has everyone. S&P predicts that the global car sales for the rest of this year will decline by 15%. But it's not all bad news. In 2010, after the last crisis, the industry rebounded by 25%, which was a 6% increase on pre-recession levels. 90% of car factories in China are already back online, and most people we have spoken to are deferring their car purchase rather than outright cancelling it. We expect little to no revenue this year, increasing well next year as we emerge from the crisis, and then jumping ahead leaps and bounds in 2022. Sit with me for a virtual coffee and I'll explain to you how the $600,000 we're asking for will ensure that Simply New Cars is the digital platform of choice for new car buyers in the UAE as we emerge from this crisis. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Hans, and I'm here to tell you the story of Sally. Sally is the space manager and the executive assistant uh, in a medium-sized company here in Dubai. We met Sally a few weeks ago through the Focus of Blue Free Run, and this is where she told us about her daily job. So Sally is the one who receives guests and takes them to the right meeting. She's the one who books meeting rooms. She's also the one who makes sure that there is no shortage in the office supplies and pantry room. And also, she's the one who makes sure that everything is in order and there is no a broken chair or a bad Wi-Fi, and so on. Sally is he, is uh, is working to to make her employee to make the employees more fulfilled and happy in their work environment. But by the end of the day, Sally found herself with no time to focus on uh, her most important responsibilities that uh, that that, go, that are reporting to her seniors. People like Sally were the reason why my team. Uh, composed of Sarhan as a CTO, Hossein as a, a co-founder and CEO, and myself as a co-founder and COO, were the reason why we built Njano. Njano is a fully automated management platform for a frustration-free workspace experience. And this solution helps space managers to make their operation uh, more leaner and uh, in order to have less frustration. And also, uh, we provide space users, users a variety of, uh, of uh, features to make them more engaged toward each other and toward the space facilities, um, thus become more productive. Jano is a web-based and an app-based uh, solution, so you can find it either uh, in iOS, Android, or uh, online. And we provide a, a set of features that goes from uh, front desk management to meeting room management to uh, a community management. This is where you can have uh, a one-on-one -on -one chats with uh, the space users or employees, and you can create channels and uh, circles in order to boost the common interest of uh, employees. Our market target uh, goes from uh, co-working spaces because we think that co-working spaces are the most extreme uh, work environment. This is why we started with them. And then we added incubators. And so that by the end, we have, uh, we have covered all the flexible office spaces that goes from corporate uh, office spaces to incubators to co-working spaces. Our, our milestones will go to the following. So at the beginning, we started with building a co-working space management solution. Uh, 
then we 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 had co-working space testing and onboarding uh, to the solution in different countries. Um, then, uh, then we will be adding the incubator management solution to the platform. Um, and also, at the same time, we will be working on adapting Jano to fit corporate needs so that by the end, we, we will be able to secure corporate clients. So far, we were able to raise 300, uh, 340K in euros. And in November 2019, we launched our private beta version in Kenya. And this is where we got the 19 co-working spaces uh, onboarded and six, uh, from six uh, different countries. Our Q1 achievements were, uh, were settled as the following. So we were able to progress in, uh, when it comes to business, uh, to business related. And this is where we uh, developed our value proposition business model and we worked on securing the next uh, 80K in euros. Also, we uh, tried to validate our market through uh, running a small media campaign for a week ad campaign. And this is where we acquired 64 uh, potential clients. Um, as for the technical progress, we were, we were able to integrate with hardware. So now we have full package. It goes with the service as a software and uh, integrated with the hardware it could be a tablet uh, or anything else. Uh, we also developed more features and we upgraded the previous features. COVID is a challenging situation as we all know. Uh, for our case, we tried to see the positive light in it. And this is, uh, and this is where we turn the, the, uh, the challenge into an opportunity. Because since we are a SaaS and a, and a software solution, we were able to integrate with, um, with different uh, other uh, parties, like project management tools, video calls, and this is to, to provide all the uh, package for, uh, for users to work from home and keep doing what they are doing. And moreover, um, our solution contains a big section that, that is called communities, uh, community uh, section. I talked about it earlier. And that section provides a one-on-one -on -one chat and uh, a way to, to keep in touch with, uh, with the team and uh, the employees. Um, also, we got more demand toward the incubator management tool because um, mainly the most of the incubators kept running their operations, but now they need to, to make them uh, automated and uh, work in, uh, in distance. And this is why we, um, we are boosting the uh, development of uh, the incubator management tool now more than ever. Our next steps will be, uh, we will work on refining our product to fit the need of SMEs. We will also continue working on integrating with third parties, um, working on the strategy of marketing our product in different countries, and finally securing uh, clients. Uh, so our needs, uh, uh, we are looking for, uh, for profiles that are interested to, ha to help us with, uh, with the strategic thinking and uh, with hiring expertise um, when, it comes to, when it comes to sales more specifically and also we are looking for smart money investors with SAS um, expertise. I would like to thank you for your attention and I invite you to try the demo version of Jano. Uh, so please if you have any questions don't hesitate. Hi I'm Hamad, one of the co-founding team members of our startup Fundo which works in travel and hospitality. But before we get into what we do, I'd like to take you on a quick mental journey. So COVID-19 is over, travel restrictions are lifted, and you've decided to book a trip to a city that you're not very familiar with. And like the fastest segment of international travel, you've decided to stay at a short-term rental, an Airbnb or something similar. You arrive at the apartment late at night, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you don't even know how to work the coffee maker. Lo and behold, there's our Fondo tablet right there, through which you get essential information about the apartment, the neighborhood, and even order things such as food, groceries, and experiences around the city. On the flip side for your host, the operator, what we do is give them a way to diversify their revenues, build genuine guest insights, and de develop customer loyalty. So what we are is a guest, man guest experience management platform, unlocking the full potential of every short-term rental apartment while becoming an essential companion to every guest stay. We aim to offer a fully digital experience an integrated, complete guest, guest management uh, tool that allows, as we said, the operator to 
diversify the revenue, build insights, but more importantly, offer imp information and services curated based on the guest profile. The transactional market is quite large. In 2019 alone, it was estimated to be $115 million in Dubai and $37.5 billion globally. And while the impact of COVID-19 hasn't been quite com fully compiled for 2020 arrivals in Dubai, we know that the tourist arrivals in Dubai have been steadily increasing over the years. And from DTCM, we know that the number of apartments being listed as short-term rental apartments has also been increasing. The competitive landscape for us is quite clear. There exist some small to medium operators that offer similar solutions uh, regionally, but we're the only ones globally who do so based, uh, on a hardware-driven solution. And we think that this is fundamental because it gives us real estate inside the apartment. We also curate the services and information based on the guest profile and have the operator's business model at the core of our offering in order to al align our objectives. So what is our business model? It's quite simple, really. A subscription for every, for every apartment deployed, a commission, and a markup on every transaction made. Since launching in February of this year, we've had amazing traction. Over 300 apartments signed in our inventory, 70% engagement in those apartments that have been occupied, but more remarkably, 50% conversion of engagements into orders. Our, uh, our partners on the platform are stellar and only matched by those people who are trying to bring on board as well. And uh, we wouldn't be sitting here in front of you without having been part of this amazing program. And all the good work that we've done has been thanks to the WAMDA team, our uh, mentors, and the, our fellow cohorts as well. But what, what have we done? Well, we've achieved all our original KPIs, uh, essentially developed a fundamentally important COVID mitigation plan, both in the short term and the long term, launched a brand new UX, launched an entire backend SaaS solution for their operators, and through our partnerships laid the, laid the ground for geographical expansions. We would be remiss not to talk about COVID-19 and what, what it's done to us and what we're doing about it, especially in the sector that we're working in. What we've decided to do is we've also advanced the tech solution. Like I said, we have accelerated a SaaS platform solution for our operators in order to insulate ourselves in a way from transactional revenues only, relying more heavily on subscription-based solutions. We've also, through our conversations with our operator partners, decided to offer services that prioritize long-term stays uh, as well. But most fundamentally, we've developed a very lean company structure to be able to weather the storm and survive and thrive uh, post-pandemic. The product roadmap for us is quite long, but we've also done very, very, uh, a very big step uh, since we've launched uh, the platform in the short time that we've been in operation, achieving both statuses, uh, stages A and B and accelerating stage C. We're looking to raise $450,000 to be deployed for team, tech, actual deployment of the solution and working capital requirements. Our five-year plan uh, has been uh, quite conservative in that we've taken five quarters post-seed funding of uh, COVID-19 impact on arrivals and occupancies. And this is based on genuine numbers that we have compiled since the launch. But our three-year three -year growth plan is very ambitious. Geographic, exp geographic expansion, expanding the actual platform, but even more, more importantly, becoming cash positive in the shortest time possi uh, possible, month on month. And this is because we have an exceptional team uh, of over 60 years of experience in award-winning startups, award-winning SMEs, blue chip corporates, family businesses, and even failed startups, mentored by an exceptional team of mentors as well. But why invest now in a startup that works in travel and hospitality? Well, we know from previous crises and studies that travel rebounds in higher numbers than pre-crisis, especially in crises that have been more fundamentally impactful to travel. So we need to be ready. Uh, we need to be ready, but we're also po posed with a very important opportunity at the moment, that of reduced cost of deployment, both in terms of hardware and in terms of manpower. And we also have very favorable conditions to be able to, to bring on board more operators who want to be ready for, with that revenue diversification once the travel rebounds as well. So we think the time is right now to be able to deploy our solution. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time and listening to uh, our, uh, our proposal, and, <clears throat> and I really look forward to taking your questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and thank you for being here today. I'm Nazih, co-founder at Looplay, the sports streaming technology. My friends and I used to play football on a weekly basis, and every time we played, there was an epic moment that happened. Unfortunately, we never captured it. Why? Because in today's amateur and new sports market, 
Most games are not recorded, players are not filmed, and a lot of hidden talent goes unnoticed. So there's an opportunity here to give players what they want and to make money by simply equipping courts with cameras and providing players with a platform to watch the video footage of their games. There are a few solutions out there offered by existing market players. However, they're either too expensive, they target the high tier segment of the market, and most importantly, they do not operate in the MENA region or are even a dominant market player. This is where Looplay comes in. Looplay is a video streaming service for sports venues and facilities, allowing players, coaches, and parents to watch their games and trainings, clip their highlights, and share them on social media. The Looplay model is a B2B2C model, where the Looplay service is offered to sports venues for a monthly subscription fee, and the Looplay platform is currently free to use by players, coaches, and parents. As of today, we have 12 courts that are Looplay enabled, each of them averaging a 400% return on investment. We have more than 2,000 users with a strong user engagement translated with over 40,000 clip views. The global market for youth sports is expected to reach $57 billion within the next few years. And the MENA market will account for $5 billion out of that. In order to tap into that market, we see three potential revenue streams as part of our business model. The courts, the users, and the ads. Despite the coronavirus pandemic delays, our long-term vision remains the same. Enter the GCC market, then expand into the MENA region, and in parallel, build an AI-powered automated sports production product, which will allow us to be the leading sports streaming technology in the region and the full-on go-to sports marketplace for talent scouts and athletes. Once we resume our business development and sales operations, we expect to cover 135 courts within the first 12 months. That'll provide us with a $20,000 monthly recurring revenue and a total of $100,000 within the first year. The team behind Blueplay is currently made of three co-founders, Karim, Edmund, and myself. Karim is our technical wizard. He has a background in computer science and has built a few products before Blueplay. Edmund also has a background in computer science and has experience in sales and business development for IT and AI companies. As for myself, I have a background in business and have experience in corporate finance and risk management. As you can see, the diversity of our backgrounds and our skills is what makes us the ideal team to build this business. We're asking for $500,000 to be spent within 18 months on product development, operational expansion, and business development. Our ideal investor will be someone who's passionate about sports, just like us, and who has experience scaling in the MENA market. Let me now show you a quick demo of our current product. So once you go on the app, you choose your court, the date, and the time of your game. That will load the full video footage of the game. You can scroll through it. And once you find a nice moment, all you do is hold the loop button, and that will clip your highlight. You can name the loop and post it, and it will go under your profile. You can then go back to it, watch it in full screen mode, you can zoom into it, you can share it with friends, and your friends can rate it for you. The coronavirus pandemic will change the way sports games and tournaments are organized and watched. And as they resume slowly and gradually in the near future, they will do so without the physical presence of fans, at least in the beginning. So Looplay will be the solution to stream those games. Thank you for listening, and now I'll take your questions. Hello everyone, my name is Carlos TV, one of the co-founders of What's Cooking. I'm here to introduce you about our company and tell you what it's all about. It, also, it all started really when every time we sat down together, hungry, we started saying, you know, we kept saying to ourselves, you know, imagine we can order some of that favorite homey meal we grew up on from somewhere. Or better yet, have someone come and prepare it right here at our home, you know, for an exquisite dining experience. Or, you know, I'll settle with, you know, mingling with other like-minded foodies over some delicious meal somewhere prepared by some iconic chef. Well, 
not anymore because this is what, what Skoken is doing. We are about to make it all happen with the click of a button. To put it simply, we're really defining a new category called food e-commerce, where we empower iconic food makers and home cooks who have signature unique dishes that they now can serve and deliver directly to customers' doorsteps. The problem is that there's no legal platform for iconic food makers to operate from, resulting in the lack of availability of homey authentic food today. However, there are so many brands yet all serve the same junk food, or mostly I should say, packaged differently, burger, pizza, pasta, etc. Well, we will provide a legal platform for carefully selected and vetted iconic food makers to provide that variety that everyone is looking for and authenticity and original dishes with safety, hygiene and quality as our top priority. There hasn't been a better time to launch with so many available great food makers eager to quench the thirst of quality, tasty, for quality, tasty, signature home dishes. After 1,000 residents or UAE residents surveyed, 89.5% would use a service like ours over other services, of which 88% describe themselves as foodies, 72% would go for iconic homey food dishes, and by the way, 71% of those 1,000 at least put two orders for food a week. The market, well, 210 billion and growing globally, of which 60 billion is MENA share. Our initial la launch market, UAE and KSA will be 5 billion. That's our target market. From a competition perspective, we're currently looking at two competitors, one in Cairo called MUM, that all is serving that geography of Cairo, and Bullforn is only Jordan focused. Whereas we will be starting in UAE, UAE and KSA and expanding slowly across the GCC into MENA. Globally, there's another player that came out a few years ago by the name of Gold Belly, started with home-style food, was part of the Y Combinator, was able to raise $20 million plus, and now they're doing extremely, extremely well across the United States. Now, what we said is we're going to provide a legal tech platform, provide all the online tools from web and mobile for both the chef and the customer, for the customer, very simple application to order, pay and track. And the chef, again, a very simple application where they can manage menus, schedule, supper clubs, and manage their earnings. Key partners will partner with across three main areas, logistics, payment, and tech. Business model, very simple, 30% from every order, of which our average ticket price is $25, delivery being passed straight to the customer. And who's going to bring this to life? We have a a considerably talented team composed from multiple different backgrounds of which we have demonstrated two startups in the past with successful exit. Where we are now, we are Q2 2020, we are at the funding and beta testing stage targeting an, an official launch of Q3 2020. Financials, we looked at the conservative model to say, okay, how, how about we look at a conservative model to project our revenues? Initial launch countries, UAE to start three months into it, KSA, and then after three months, Kuwait. We looked at the entire landscape of available chefs. There are about roughly 200,000. We said, let's target 0.5% of which will leave us with 500 potential chefs across UAE and KSA. Market size of 5 billion, let's target 0.5%, which will give us 25 million, which means 500 chefs, 1 million orders, and 25 million revenue over 18 months. 25 million revenue will translate into 7.5 million gross profit, which would make us, which will make our break, break even point at month 16. The ask we're asking for, in, we're asking for $1 million to increase our supply and demand over the next 18 months. It will be split between sales and marketing 500,000, operation 250,000, technology 150, and SGNA 100,000. That's it, folks. Any questions? Hi, this is Jill from the Hospitality Connect, a professional hospitality network. Now, I'm pretty sure that at the other side of this video, there's someone 
who has gone to their local cafe and found that their favorite barista that used to make them the best Americano simply doesn't work there anymore. And you must have thought to yourself, they probably got a better job. And for most of us, a better job means a better salary, a better standard of living, and ultimately some type of career development. But in the case of hospitality workers, this is often not the situation. Hospitality workers have one of the lowest salary incomes. They work long hours and they have almost no career development in their current job. They have limited access to good job opportunities and it's safe to say it's hard for them to find out about jobs with job boards only serving as a platform where they can upload their CV with the hopes of hearing back from the employer. Now we saw a big gap in this market that no one was addressing the financial, the social, and the educational development of these workers, which is why we created the Hospitality Connect, a platform where they can build a professional profile and connect with peers, where they can search and apply for jobs, do online training and certification, and where they can avail discounts and deals to our partners. In a nutshell, what we have built is the blue collar version of LinkedIn for the hospitality industry. Now with a market size of 2.4 billion in the Middle East alone, and a combined 28.7 between Europe and America, our aim is to capture 10% of this market. And by doing so, we would be sitting on the largest live database of hospitality staff globally. And how do we plan to do this? As simply put it, we develop sticky communities of hospitality staff by giving them access to jobs, deals, and discounts. And in return, we attract company owners employers and recruitment companies who we can charge for one-off job postings or who can subscribe to our premium subscriptions and have unlimited access to our database. And finally, we charge companies and brands that target both the hospitality trade and hospitality staff. Now with the current condition of the COVID-19, we know that the hospitality industry has been massively affected, which led us to make a shift in our business model, which mainly depended on monthly subscription. We now had to focus and shift to a more short-term revenue generator, which is our one-off job postings and advertising. Now with the decrease in hospitality and tourism, a lot of hospitality establishments had to close down or temporarily shut down. With all this happening, we saw an opportunity because now more than ever, hospitality staff are looking to earn an income and looking for part-time jobs, which is why our focus now is to onboard hospitality staff and to grow our network, and also for our sales team to onboard partners. We predict that within year two, our company would be profitable post the coronavirus. Now, how we plan to do this is by setting ourselves apart from our competitors, by being the first blue collar network globally that provides professional development for members for free, and by being the first direct on-demand part-time hire company in the UAE. Our target market tends to be extremely price sensitive. So we plan to bring them on board by using exclusive deals and discounts that they can only avail through our platform. We also make use of social media and aggressive referral schemes to incentivize them to bring their friends and colleagues on board. Also, we make use of digital networks and our sales team to onboard recruiters and sales partners prior to the lockdown. Now, since we launched three and a half weeks ago, we have gained traction from over 50 companies who want to work with us post the lockdown. And also our network has grown with over 2000 members in just three and a half weeks. We are currently asking for 500,000 to develop our product as we are in the MVP stage. A large amount will be going to our sales and partnerships and salaries and to our training and development courses for our platform. Our team consists of myself and Abhishek, who have a combined 35 years plus experience in the hospitality industry. Not only did we work with these hospitality staff members, but we used to be them, which is why we are the best team to solve this problem. On our board of advisors, we have Ada from LinkedIn and Paul from Grow Studio, which are helping us validate and grow and put in place strategies to scale our business. Finally, if you are interested in joining the first ever Blue Collar Network, email us on the link below. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. We are Spectrum Lab and we provide energy efficiency solution that fights against global warming. We all know that the cities are getting warmer and by 2050, we expect a five degree increase. This is mainly due to two reasons. On the one hand, it's because we emit more CO2 globally. And on the other hand, the urbanized land is growing and capturing more and more heat inside. Our built environment is the biggest driver of all of these problems. Buildings are responsible for 40% of global energy consumption, which leads to the highest CO2 emissions. And on top of this, in the urbanized land, the heat is captured the most by the building surfaces. So the only way to address these two problems is to work on the building envelope. Today, green roof and reflective coatings are coping with that. Nevertheless, green surfaces are expensive and hard to install, while reflective coatings, since they reflect all the time, they lead to an increase of energy need for heating the building. Therefore, we, Spectrum Lab, provide a dynamic coating that adapts itself to the outdoor conditions. Basically, it reflects sun rays when it's hot and absorbs when it's cold outside. So when it's applied to the building envelope, in warm seasons, the original color of the envelope will turn white, reflect the sun rays, and cool the building. In cold seasons, it will go back to its original dark color, absorb the heat, therefore it will help building to be heated. Here you can see how our prototypes work in real life. The coating over 25 degrees gradually changing its color. Once the outside temperature reaches the 30 degree, it becomes totally white. And when the temperature goes under 25 degrees, the coating is taking back its initial color. By the end of the year, according to our lab simulations, we deliver 15% of energy savings for cooling and heating, with a payback period which is two times shorter than alternative technologies. This is our main competitive advantage. By building a profitable business, our ambition is to have a positive impact on the environment. If we can cover 80% of a city, the overall temperature can be reduced up to three degrees. And we can reduce 4% of city CO2 emissions, which is equivalent to planting six trees per person. In the smart coating industry, Spectrum Lab is the first outdoor thermochromic coating for opaque surfaces. Compared to energy efficiency solutions like solar panels or competitors such as green roofs or reflective coatings, we are the easiest to apply and the solution that leads to the shortest payback period. According to our industry analysis, our value chain positioning is to become an R&D startup specialized in phase changing materials. Therefore, our core activity will be to license our IP to coating manufacturers to be more scalable by leveraging existing players distribution channels and more profitable since we don't have any variable costs. The industry standard is to take 5% of producers' revenue. Additionally, we want to realize pilot projects by directly applying the coating for experiment and communication purposes. The market is $100 billion all over the world. This is based on the energy savings that we can provide, sharing the value delivered half and half between the owner of the building and the coating applier. We mainly focus in the European market because it's the best climate zone. And we want to start with the commercial and industrial buildings where we can provide the most energy savings according to our simulations. Finally, by taking 5% of European producers' revenues, we target $400 million market. The coating industry is globalized and consolidated. 50% of market shares are concentrated among 10 players. Our potential clients are any European producers with this strategy to become competitive in the environmental friendly coating industry, such as ExxonMobil, PPG industry and BASF. So far, we have built our first working prototype, developed a unique energy simulation tool and published in CERN Innovation Journal. We signed a collaboration with research centers that will start soon. And now in the following two years, we are planning to go back and forth between the lab and the field to keep improving the product by gathering real life experiment data. By doing so, we will be able to fill a worldwide patent and start licensing the IP to producers by 2022. Our longer vision is to exploit different applications of this technology and run neighborhood scale experiment in real life to measure really our impact. Our business model has the potential to become instantaneously profitable as soon as the technology is finalized and protected. 
by 2024, we project a yearly revenue of 7.7 .7 million euros. That's why now we are looking for 500K, which will be mainly used to finalize the technology by creating a collaboration between the topmost research centers, Minde saint etienne and Politecnico di Torino, where the performances and the durability of the material will be input based on its application to the building surface. To conclude, I'm surrounded by an amazing multidisciplinary team, which is composed by three engineers, two PhDs, one architect, one MBA, and professors within our advisory team. The uniqueness of our team, I would say, is the perfect balance between the scientific research and the entrepreneurial ambition. We are Spectrum Lab, and we believe that intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am from Singularity Filters. Mobile communication is one of the most important and vibrant technologies in our daily life. Currently, the world is gearing out for the release of 5G technology to accommodate the environment of Internet of Things and to provide big data-based platform. In this context, base stations are needed to transmit and receive 5G signals. Imagine you are trying to have a conversation with someone about something really important but you are in a nightclub and there's a drilling next door. And the music is 100 decibels. This is something similar to the problems of 5G communication system, which does not have a proper filtering device. Singularity Filters is a research-based startup working on the next generation of radio frequency filters to suppress any unwanted noises and interference in the 5G telecommunication networks. We produce rapid, high-performance, low-cost, reliable, and sustainable filter solution for 5G and beyond. The conventional filters are relatively large, limited to 4G, and highly sensitive to manufacturing errors. Hence, complex tuning may need to employ to compensate the manufacturing inaccuracies. As a result, good quality of radio frequency filters are usually expensive. Singularity filter is robust and compact in size. It has the properties of reduced fabrication sensitivity and hence provide a cost-effective solution for 5G and beyond. When we compare our filters with other tech filters technologies, such as the MicroStrip, CoreXL, and Dielectric, Singularity filters is optimum in the sense that it is small and lightweighted. More significantly, it has the properties of reduced fabrication sensitivity, and hence the production time and cost will be significantly reduced. For the competitive landscape, our filters come with reduced fabrication sensitivity. Our pricing is low at $400 per unit. We provide regional support in the Southeast Asia and UAE. Lastly, we also provide product customization. For the timeline, we have designed, fabricated, and validated our filter prototype. We intend to upscale the project to perform product validation and field testing. For the growth strategy, it is divided into four phases. The first phase is team formation and IP fouling, followed by product enhancement, partnership and field testing, and lastly, product certification. The target market sizing is huge. As, you, as we can see here, the RF filters are the, are the fastest growing segment of the RF front-end industry of smartphone and Internet of Things devices, capturing nearly 69% of the market, which is around 13 billion by 2020. We target a 10% market, which is 1.3 billion in the UAE and Southeast Asia. For our revenue models, it is based on transactional model with a unit price of $400. We also provide service, support, and maintenance. Lastly, we can also license part of our IP to the best station manufacturers. This is the worldwide market projection. As we can see, the number of base stations increases dramatically. And at the year of 2021, we need approximately 38 million base stations and each 5G base station requires at least two filters.
Assuming a 1% of market penetration with a unit price of $400, this can be translated into a, into a potential revenue of $304 million. For the capital requirement, we are requesting $800,000 for the entire project for the next two years. For the financial projection, we are assuming that we are, we, we are not gaining any income for the first two years. At the, year, at the end of year 2025, our net income will be $152 million, assuming that 50% net profit margin. We have an amazing team behind this. I am the CEO and my colleagues Ng Guan Chen and Ng Chong Lei will be the CTO and CSO respectively. Thank you very much for your time and if you have any question, please do not hesitate to contact me. Hello all, uh, this is Gautam and uh, our team is developing a solution called ProFind. ProFind is a uh, in intelligent agriculture insurtech solution which helps in simplifying the claim settlement process between agriculture pro producers and agriculture insurance providers. You know, in the current scenario, uh, many farmers whose farms are affected by natural disasters like flood and drought and they don't have any other uh, resources for the uh, uh, other than uh, other than insurance and even that also uh, due to uh, slow assessment and uh, delay in their distribution of uh, claims uh, sometimes they end up with committing suicide because they don't have any other source of income so uh, we are trying to solve that issue so first of all there are key problems uh, one of the uh, key issue is changing climate due to change in climate the frequency of natural disaster is keep increasing day by day other important issue is the complex insurance process like many farmer are they they don't have uh, what i can say like they don't have enough financial knowledge so that they can uh, get justified amount of claim payback like this problem is quite frequent in south 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 and southeast asian countries other most important issue is the lack of the data which ultimately causing delay in the claim settlement because claim settlement is dependent upon the damage assessment of the affected area so actually even farmer and also insurance providers don't have the pre and post disaster data of extent of damage health of the crop vegetation before uh, any any disaster has been occurred so lack of the data one of the important issue that's why we are trying to solve using advanced technologies so how we are working like the main target is to collect the data but at large extent collection of the ground data is very hard so that we are using satellite imagery which can provide data of the cropland crop health soil moisture and other parameter for the large extent of the area and then we are as the processing is very slow if we do conventionally so for that we are using machine learning techniques which can uh, speedify the whole process or automate whole process of data satellite image processing then we are validating that those data using data collected on the ground by mobile based application so this is how our system work so the from all this data collected what we are doing we are generating expert advisory so that advisory will be helpful for the farmers to become more risk resilient and get prepared against natural disaster and even same data will be used by the insurance company also for a quick and accurate estimation of potential damage and also to settle the claims more quickly and easily then that data will be shared with all the stakeholders so that they can take future decisions so our target market market is specifically you know asian countries only and that also southeast asian countries but i want to say like from the whole global um, agriculture insurance market, 70% comes from the Asian region only, and that area is highly vulnerable to natural disasters like flood and a drought. So you can see about 80 million hectares of the land is affected, is more prone to natural disasters. So how we are making money? We are charging area-based fees from the insurance provider, and we are not charging anything from the agriculture producers and we are providing them risk advisory to become more risk resilient so this is how we are working 
as we are providing validated services so we are charging a small amount of charge so if we talk about 80 million hectare of the land and we consider only 40 percent we can let use amount of revenue from that also and based on the uh, financials we, we are we can we can target to be 106.9 million us dollars uh, from these three countries thailand vietnam and indonesia if we consider only 30 percent of total market so now i will come to the competition side like there are many other uh, startups companies are there who are providing these services but like majority of them are like not considering uh, southeast asia as a market second thing they are using generalized optical data but those data will not work during cloudy conditions so we are using radar data we don't provide rehabilitation we have so for that we have partnership with many ngos who will provide rehabilitation support so to develop whole system we need about 500000 us dollars for software development and the business development and in future we are going to integrate it with iot and with blockchain we are targeting to cross the break even point within two years uh, this is our timeline we can generate our mvp within one year for flood and drought and our team comprises of having good people with good experience in satellite image processing business development and software development Thank you so much. Hi everyone. I hope you all are doing great. This is Sarma Dasan. I'm an industrial designer from Pakistan and I'm a founder and designer of Safe Cooking. Safe Cooking is designed to help the people who are currently facing this kind of dangerous and harmful scenario just because of their cooking method. The problem is one third part of Pakistan's population are underprivileged nomads living in our temporary houses and they all are still using wood under the three stone stove method. 100,000 people get hurt and 20,000 people die each year in Pakistan just because of smoke and toxic fume. And they spend around one fourth part of their income on wood, which is their fuel. So Safe Cooking is a social enterprise that brings a solution for them as a stove that allows its user to still use wood to cook, but in a safer and cost-effective manner. The unique selling point of the stoves are it reduces 60% of their wood consumption and it makes it six times faster as compared to their ordinary three-stone stove method. I'm using sand as a cheap insulator to be filled inside the stove. And at the time of migration, they can pull out the sand and the stove will become portable. The best part is the price of safe cooking stove is equal to the amount the user going to save using it in first two months. The design of the stove eliminates the burning heat of wood faced by the user. It has a proper ventilation system that prevents them from smoke, toxic fumes, and allows them to cook indoor. It is designed under the precaution of the user, so it is a user-friendly product. It also has an additional chamber on the left side of the, of the stove that helps them heating over their leftover meal at the same time they are preparing their fresh meal at the right side of the stove. On the timeline, we are currently developing our business strategy with the, with, under the mentorship of Vemda X and C3. We started our journey in 2017 with the concept and problem, and problem identification. In 2018, we did some research, experiment, prototyping, testing, and we came up with the final and tested product. In 2019, we participated boot camp organized by Gruber Gradshaw. So for the future, we, we need some funds to start up our company and to start mass production and distribution of our stove as a social enterprise as Safe Cooking. On the competitive landscape, Safe Cooking does not have any competitor and it is leading, but we competed with the G stove, but G stove is not available in Pakistan and even it is not even economical and fuel efficient because it is not designed for the user I am targeting. So for my user, safe cooking will be the only solution. Our target market is very high, around 10 million underprivileged families in Pakistan. 
are using three stone stoves. So these are my targets. And the figure of 10 million are incre is increasing day by day as other resources are getting low and expensive. As a, a social enterprise, our go-to-market strategy will be to reaching out the NGOs to get bulk orders and to sell our stoves to NGOs, they will donate to, uh, to the users. And we will be selling our products to Well of Community too, to our website. And we'll be reaching out direct customers as a direct sales because the price of the stove is very affordable. The unit economics of uh, the unit is $15 divided into three parts, 60% material, 33% outsource manufacturing, and 7% packaging. And we will be selling our stove at the cost of $20 and the gross profit margin will be 25%. We will be needing funds of 50,000 USD to start up our company and to produce first 4,000 stove in our first year. On our first year, we are not generating much profit, but gradually we are, as we are increasing our manufacturing of the stove and selling of the stove, we are gradually increasing our net income by the fifth year, we'll be generating 11.1% of net income margin rate. This is our team, uh, and I will be working uh, with my colleagues under the designation of marketing manager, manager operation, and production manager. And this is the some of uh, the active NGOs we have listed out, and we will be targeting them once we are established our company and started. Uh, selling our stove, so we will be targeting uh, targeting them to get bulk orders from them. So that's all. Thank you so much for your time, and if you have any query, feel free to contact. Take care.